Today I have a message for you today. And the message is titled, God's Word is a Chain. Many of us, I don't know about you, but most of us that have worked outside and worked with our hands and worked in industry, at some point in time we came in contact with chains. Those of us that, that rode bicycles. Yeah. It wasn't just a broke down bicycle that you had to push to make it go. It had a chain. And then studying this word, I've been studying it for some time. God gave me the title of his word is a chain. And if we use his word, which one word connects to another, one scripture connects to another, and then it's on and on and on. And that word will hold you together if you allow it to. Amen. God's people is like a chain. There are diversities of chains, so many different types of chains and so many different uses. They have uses around the farm with hay balers and, and planters and all types of machinery with different types of chains, different strengths of chains. God has given us a word that is a strong word. And, and he tells us in his, in his word that it is sharper than any two-edged sword. This is something that you can put your life on, you can depend on, and it will take care of you. It will bring you through hard scrapes. It will bring you out of hard scrapes. You can place your family in God's word. It'll take care of your family. But God also wants us to be a champion. He wants us to be steadfast and unmovable. He wants us to be high tensile. He wants us to be strong and stand on his word until the end. God's word is, is a chain. It is something that will bring you through. It is something that you can depend on to take you through. As a little boy, you, you put a chain on your bicycle and if you didn't have it tight, had it slack, when that chain come loose and you were trying to pedal it, it let you know the next time you want to get that chain good and tight to make sure that it don't come off anymore. Because even in that chain was your ability to move forward. Most bicycles, that chain gave you the ability to stop. It gave you the ability to go fast and to go slow or to go slow. God's word is very similar. But God's word is not like that chain that you can't depend on. See, you can depend on God's word. The problem is God depending on our word. See, some of us make promises to God and we don't even keep our promises. We're like that slack chain. We could come loose and injure someone or something. But God's word, you can depend on. First, I'm sorry, John, St. John 10 and 10. I like to read it with you. St. John 10 and 10. It says, A thief comes not but for to steal kill and to destroy. I am come that they may have life and that they may have yeah, more abundant. Yeah. Read another scripture, James 3 and 16. This is from the NIV. It says, for there are, for, for where you have envy and selfish ambitions, there you will find disorder, envy, disorder in every evil practice. The message that I'm bringing to you today is talking about words, things that cause the chain to be broken, things that cause the chain to fail and not hold at the time that it is supposed to hold. 
in the message today, I'm talking about wrong thinking, wrong speaking, and wrong praying. All right. You, you, if you, if you get something out of this word today, then you're going to go home and you're going to search the scriptures to see if what I'm saying is true. If what I'm saying is the fact, if what I'm saying is something that you need to apply to your life. When we think about Satan and how the Bible says that he comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. He wants to destroy families. He wants to destroy friendships. He wants to destroy relationships. He'll do anything he can to destroy the human body. He wants to keep a turmoil and calamities taking place among folks that call themselves friends. He will do anything he can to even destroy an individual's mind. He wants your thinking to be disrupted. He wants your praying to be disrupted. He wants your talking, your, the things that you say to one another. He wants that to be a calamity. He wants it to be confusion in the things that you say. Uh, Brother Gray preached a message one day and he talked about folks having the wrong impression or the things that they say, people taking it wrong. There's many times that folks have talked to us and we heard the words that they said and then later on we said, well, did they say what I think they said? You know, it sounded like that there was some tension in their voice with the things that they said. And sometimes it's because that they have picked it up wrong. They have heard something that they thought was true. And actually it was a lie. And then they come back and they bring it to you, but then they bring it to you in the wrong way. Instead of trying to find out what could make things peaceful, they bring it back in the wrong way. And, and what I'm leading to is Job and how the things that happened in Job's life, how he questioned God, how he wondered what was going on, and he blamed God, actually, in his mind. But it was, when we find out, we find out that Job had something that had let him down, and that was in his thinking. Uh, he even tells us in the Word that the thing that he thought has come upon him the thing that he feared the most has come upon him. But it was because of his thinking. And then he allowed out of his mouth to say things that was derogatory, things that was downgrading to God, things that he felt God had done to him or allowed to happen to him. When actually the Bible says, when, when God talked to Satan, he says, Behold, he says, he is in your hand. And it's because of the way Job thought. It's because of Job's thinking allowed Satan to come in. Yeah. Job's actions allowed Satan to come in and disrupt his life. Disrupt his family. God relies on us to hold on to his word. And I don't know, I was thinking about how the word sometimes goes through people. And I was thinking about how sometimes you can eat something that don't agree with your body and it just goes right on through. I mean, you know, some of y'all might say, well, I, why did he use that? Well, we have all experienced that before. It didn't agree with you. The food didn't agree with you and then all of a sudden you say, well, something's happening. I hear a rumbling going on and something's happening. But some of us take God's word the same way. We take it in and it ain't long that we done expelled it. It's gone. It didn't mean much to us at all. And sometimes we wonder why. I mean, you get home and you say, what did the preacher preach about? Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> See, it's gone. It done went on through. It didn't take hold. Something happened. And, and he was telling me about how we rely on change. We rely on things to work for us. See, we rely on God's work. Now see, when we got something that's going on in our lives, when we have an issue in our lives that we're dealing with, 
that word don't go through us then. We'll pick that word up and we'll read it and we'll say, God, when you go work, when you go operate on that word, when you go move on that word, when is something going to happen on that word? But that's because you got an issue at hand. But see, at times when God just wants us to hold his word for those times so that we'll be ready for those times when issues come up in our lives, issues come up in our neighbor's lives, issues come up in our co-workers' lives, issues come up in our family's lives. He wants us to have it on the inside so that we can meditate on that word and we can speak that word and we can think concerning that word and we can pray according to what his word is saying. Amen. Job, Job, we're like a chain. God is relying on us. He's relying on us. If I give somebody something, I want them to enjoy it what I have given them. I want them to cherish what I have given them. And this is what we should want our kids to do about God's word. We should want them to hold God's word and not like a laxative and they just go right on through. Amen. Hold God's word for the time that they will need. Each and every one of us, some of us got more days behind us than we have in front of us. Sooner or later, we are going to be gone. What, is, what are we going to be able to say that we have done for the law. Uh, when we mark down the things on paper about what we have done for the law, what do we have there? And if we put a column down the middle and say, I'm going to mark down the things I have not done for the law, which one will outweigh the other? The things that you have done for the Lord or the things that you have not done for the Lord? And see, some folks grow up in this era that we're in today and they think, I don't need to do anything for the Lord except for to try to live right. Shake the preacher's hand and go to church every now and then. But my Bible tells me that God requires me, I don't know about you, but it requires me to do a little bit more than that. Let me move on. For so, today some people hear the word and it's like it goes in one ear and out the other. I see most of you probably say, well that's what he should have said in the first place. Goes in one ear and out the other. But God gave me both of them. Gave me both of them. God says, this is Isaiah 55 and 11. So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me whole. But it shall accomplish that which I please and purpose. And it shall prosper in the things for which I sent it. Psalm of Proverbs, I'm sorry, 22 and 6 says, train up a child in the way that they should go. And when he or she is old, it will not depart from he or she. We need to make sure that we put ourselves in that child's place. As the word is saying we need to make sure that we are trained up as a child. We need to make sure that we are grasping onto God's word so that we won't lose it. Many of us, we go back and research the words that we've heard. I mean, there's messages of Sister Wallace that I heard Brett Graves say last week, but there's certain messages that she had that just comes back to me. Words that I've heard Sister Sand preach, they come back to me. Words that all the ministers here have ministered, and those words come back, and I go back and I check them out again, you know, and it's still good again. We can tell when God's anointing has been in that word. One, many times I preached in Ohio, I've quoted the different ministers here. In the words that they said, Brother Hill, I quoted him in different words because I picked up what God was saying right. at that time. Amen. See, when a minister stands here, unless he's up here just trying to entertain you, he's passing on the word that the Lord has given them. Amen. And it is up to us to hear that word, even when it's in the Sunday school. It's with, with, with Deacon Thomas, Deacon Hopkins. 
That word is going forth. God is putting everything in our midst right now for a reason. It is up to us to grasp onto that and hold on to it because there's a day coming when all of this is going to be needed and we may not have it at hand. See, in Job's day, he didn't have the Bible. You see what I'm saying? He didn't have the Bible. He couldn't take it home and study John and Matthew and Mark. Today we have the Bible. Yeah, yeah. See, Job made mistakes in his day, but he couldn't, he made mistakes in chapter two that he couldn't read chapter one. All right. See, we can read chapter one all the way to the end. Yeah. And if we make a mistake, the pressure on us will be heavier than on Job. Why? Because we had more opportunity right. to get the word. Right. Many of us our children, and I'm speaking to myself for years, made sure they got up on time, got on the bus, come in, did their homework. Secular education. All right. Yeah. What do we do for Christian education? Right. What do we do about the University of the Holy Spirit? Right. What are we doing for our kids on that? Right. Go outside and play and get out of my way. Go shoot the ball or something or Play catch. But just get out and go. Go to the TV and play a game. Video game. Job didn't have all that. But the Bible says that he was an upright man. Yeah. This was a man that gave sacrifice for his children. But his thinking was wrong. Some of the things that he was thinking about was wrong when his afflictions came upon him. And he blamed God or he accused God of some of the things that was happening. He spoke ill about God. One of the things that Job was saying was talking about God giveth and God taketh away. The God I serve is a God of light. He ain't taking nothing from you. He ain't giving to you. We got to think about that. And many of us have preached. Many of us have looked at this. Many of us have taught that God afflicted Job. He gave Job to the devil. He did. See, Job's thinking gave himself over to the Satan. The way that he thought, the things that he thought. Let me, let me get a scripture. Job 1 and 12. It says, and behold, the Lord said unto Satan. No, it says, and the Lord said unto Satan, behold, look. All that he hath is in your power. Why would he say that to Satan? All that he hath is in your power. Why would he say that to him? Behold, look, all that he hath is in your power, is in your hand. It's because Job, Job says, he says, this is what I've been thinking. This is the thing that I most greatly fear is coming upon me. It's like us today. How many of us, when we go to the doctor, we go and say, I ain't worried about nothing. You got to go down and take your lab test. You're looking at another lady that's doing your lab test. You're wondering if she's reading that thing, if something is different than what it should be. You go to get an x-ray, you want to. You're looking at her face to see what her facial expression is to make sure that she's not making a frown or looking as if something is wrong. It's because we still have fears about what's going on even though we worship and serve the Lord. All right. But God wants us to trust in him no matter what. He wants us to trust and believe in him no matter what. Job, I can understand how he may have misspoke because he didn't have what we have today. He did not have this Bible. See, it's going to be hard on some of us that have all of this printed word, living in a country where Christians don't, don't have to worry about being shot down, hung, or head cut off by reading or worshiping God's word. And we won't do it. We won't do it. Joe, Joe, let me get back to Joe. Let me get back to Joe. Every one of us has had a problem in our life and turn to God's word to read. And many of us have read the book of Job on the, on the 
issues, Job, he even had a wife. He was trying to hold on. His wife told him, just curse God and die. Man, you know, you're going through all of that. You know, I, I don't see no way you're going to make it. You know, you, you just need to curse God and die. But I got somebody knocking on the back door anyway. And, uh, you're going to try to make a new start. But Job held on anyway. He held on anyway. God had something in Job. Job was a good chain. He just had a couple bad links. And God knew that if he repaired those bad links with some stronger reinforcement, that he could depend on Job. Some of us today, we're a good chain. We just have a couple bad links. God knows us. See, a lot of us think, well, I'm here for this reason, and I'm here for that reason. But only God knows the reason that all of us and any of us is in Trinity today. Yeah. Brother Hopkins says, you're going to be blessed when you come through the door. We believe that. And by us believing that and speaking that, God is blessing folks that come through the door. All right. Many of us that are here today, God is blessing us and we don't even realize it. We take for granted some of the blessings that we receive, but he is blessing us. Yeah. I remember when I first heard about the disease called AIDS. And many of us read and heard the reports, seen the reports, and it was speaking of um, how this is a uncurable disease. Mm -hmm. We had folks coming on the TV saying this is one of the seven plagues. This is something that the world will never get rid of. But I'm here to tell you today that if you can have it, God can heal. Amen. If you can have it, God can heal. Yeah. See, some folks get this or they get that and they think like, well, this is something that I got to live with for the rest of my life. But see, even with Job, the Bible shows us that later on, everything was all right. Everything was all right. And sometimes if we can have the mind to understand, the mind to see, the ears to hear God's word and understand what it is saying, we'll realize that in a little while, everything is going to be all right. Yeah. Everything is going to be all right. Because if you can have it, Rebecca, God can heal it. Yeah. If you can have it, he can heal it. But now, if you go speak and say, this is mine. I can't do nothing about it, but take this, that, or the other. This is mine. It's yours. It's yours. You done claimed it. You done said it's yours. And see, that's one thing I try to tell one of my sisters about the issues that she has. I say, hey, we're sitting around here talking about this is yours. This ain't none of yours. This belongs to the devil. Now, he gonna get to you if you keep calling for it. But now, if you keep letting him know the devil is a liar and Jesus will take your heart, then you gonna get what Jesus got. Let the devil have his stuff. You know, in your daily confession, every morning when you get up, anything that's aching you, you ought to let the devil know you're alive. This is yours. You can come get this and take it on back with you. This ain't none of mine. It ain't none of mine. It's not mine. If you can have it, Jesus can heal. That's what we got to understand. See, it's got to be the right talking, the right speaking, the right thinking, and the right praying. Look at it. 1 John 1 and 4. 1 John 1 and 4. 1 John 1 and 4 and then 1 John 1 and 5. And then we'll jump over to James 1 and 17. See, God is not a thief. He did not come to take from you. He come to give unto us. He come to give unto us. 1 John one and four says, and these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. This then is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness. So now in sickness, what is that there? Man, that's darkness. That's 
not God. He said, he's the God of light, and in him there is no darkness. Let's read uh, uh, James uh, 1 and 17. Every good gift, every perfect gift is from above. And cometh down from the Father of lights, and whom, with whom is no variables, no variation, no, no differences, neither shadow of turning, shadow of turning. God is the God of light. He's not a thief. He's not coming to take something from us. You know, the Bible tells us about a fivefold ministry. It says that He gives unto us apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the edifying, for the building up of the church, for the saints, for us to improve. It didn't say nothing about He give us. Cancels, he give us car wrecks, he give us problems with, I mean, is that what the fivefold ministry is supposed to be? I mean, it doesn't say anything about that, you know, divorces and all of this. All of that is from the devil. We've got to realize that. So when things happen in our lives, we can't claim this and say, this is this or this is that. I got this and I got that. We've got to turn around and say, that is of the devil. Lord, I'm waiting for the time for you to remove that. And then we'll hit him with a couple of scriptures and let him know. I don't read your word. I know you said it. Hey, the rest I know you said it. I'm waiting on it. I'm waiting on it to turn. I'm waiting on it to go the other way. And be like Job and get double for your trouble. 